So yesterday we had three videos uploaded on uh, the properties of logarithms and this is just a continuation of practicing the properties of logarithms. So we should have these guys memorized. The product property. Now what is the product property? Product means multiply. So right here you have m times n. And what it's saying is you have log of something times something then you could take that log and split it into two logs, log of that first something plus log of the second something. Or you could have the log base something, log base something, um, and put them together as one single log using the property backwards. Um, and you could only do that, the product property, when there's a plus sign. Okay, And the logs have to be identical. If it's a log base 3 here, it has to be a log base 3 here, so you could write them as one single log base 3 over here. Okay. Um, same thing with quotient property. You could, you call it expanding. If you take the, the log base B and make two of them, and you take that top one, put it here, the bottom one, put it here, and put a subtraction between them, you're call, that's called expanding. Going backwards is called condensing. Uh, most of the time on equations, we're going to be condensing to be able to solve. Okay. Because what happens on equations is that you have two logarithms on the same side and you want to get rid of the log, you can't get rid of it unless it's one single logarithm. So we take both of them and we condense it to one log using the product property. Or we take both of them and condense it to one log using the quotient property. Okay. Uh, the power property also comes in handy. That's really easy, the easiest one I think, where you have a power and it could become multiplication by bringing it out into the front. So that's why this n is no longer an n, it's out here in the front. Um, so you could say n times this. Or if you had a number that you were multiplying by the log, you could raise it up to be the power so you could get rid of the n. You could use the property forward or backwards also. Um, so expanding usually doesn't happen that much. Uh, they want us to practice expanding with these guys. And it's kind of silly because our calculator could do it. There's a calculator, the Casio, that will allow you to do, well, actually any of these, um, they're both log base 10. So your calculator could do this, any calculator could do this. Your cell phone could do this. So if you use common log 35, you get a decimal answer. But what they want you to do is not to use your calculator. They want you to practice uh, using the properties because they give you log base 10 of five and log base 10 of seven. They give you those decimal values, right? So what they want you to do is to manipulate the 35 to either look like fives or sevens or both fives and sevens. Now we all know that 35 is really five times seven. So if I rewrite this as log base 10 of five times seven, then I could use what property to expand it? The, the, product, the product property, right? The, because we're multiplying. Again, the product property says that if you have multiplication of m times n with one single log, you could expand it, make two logs, and put the m on the first one and the n on the second one. That's what we're going to be doing with this one. I have log base 10 of 5 times 7, so I want to expand it. Log base 10 of 5 plus log base 10 of 7. Okay. Now, why would I want to do that? Because on the instructions, they give us log base 10 of 5 and they give us log base 10 of 7. Those are these decimal values right here. So all I need to do is substitute, substitute, and I'm really just adding the decimal values. So I would simply become 0 0.6990 plus uh, 0 0.8451. And on a calculator, that would give us 1.5441. So that's your answer. Now, again, what's the purpose of this? Just to practice memorizing properties and practice prop, uh, applying the properties. Now, of course, you could just type this into your calculator and it'll give you this answer. However, we want to practice our properties uh, by memorizing them and by applying them and expanding and condensing. Um, down here is the real deal where you're solving, okay? Now, let's think about this. My first reaction, Jonathan, is to get rid of the log base 7s by raising both sides to become powers of base 7. However, I have this 2 thirds in front, so I cannot do that yet. What power, what power property, 
what property, which is the power property, uh, do I need to use, I'll use a power property, right? So how does a power property work? You could take whatever value you're multiplying in front and you could make it an exponent of, the, of what you're taking the log of. So I'm gonna make that two thirds, I'm gonna make it the exponent of eight. Does that make sense? The power property, where you could take the number that's in front and make it a power, okay? So the left side, I'm gonna leave it alone. The right side is going to become log base 7 of 8 to the 2 thirds power. Now, of course, you could type this in to the calculator, 8 to the 2 thirds power, or you could, you could uh, rewrite the 8 as 2 to the 3rd power. Now, why would I want to rewrite 8 as 2 to the 3rd power? Because a power to a power we multiply, and in this case, it works out pretty nicely. The 3 and the 3 cancel out. So what we really have is 2 to the 2nd power and 2 to the second power is 4. So on the right side, we're going to have log base 7 of 4. And on the left side, we have log base 7 of n. And now that we really do have a log base 7 to the whole left side, a log base 7 to the whole right side, now I could get rid of the log base 7 by raising both sides to be power of base 7. That'll cancel out. The n will come down, the equal will come down, the 4 will come down, I'm done, n equals 4. The only other detail that you need to do is check and make sure that your value 4 doesn't give you negative uh, values inside your logarithms. So, if I plugged in my answer 4 in here, it wouldn't be a negative 4, it's a positive 4, log base 7 of 4, that's totally fine. Um, that, that should work, so it's not an extraneous solution. Number 12, we have log base A to 48 minus log base A to W equals log base A to 4. You're probably thinking let's raise everything to be the power of base 8, but it doesn't work out that way because you have two logs on one side of the equation. That messes it up. It just doesn't work, right? So what we need to do is condense it. Make both of these logs just one log base 8. We need to condense it. What property are we going to use? What property, when I look at these guys... Am I going to use? Am I going to use the product property, the quotient property, or the power property? Quotient property. Why quotient property? Because there's a minus sign, right? And we're just talking about the left side, guys. Maybe I should zoom in a little more to ignore the right side. Let's just focus in on the left side here. We're going to use a quotient property, and that says that if you have log base A of something minus that same exact log base A to something else, you could condense it, write both log base 8 together as one single log base 8. Okay? Now, the only trick is that you have to take the m value, which in this case is 48, and put it over the n value, which in this case is w. So I'm going to write it as 48 over w. So on the left side, we really have log base 8 of 48 over w equals, right? The equal sign comes down. Now, let's take a look at the right side of this equation. The right side is log base a to 4. There's nothing to do there. Let me just rewrite it. And now that we have both log base a of the entire left side, log base a of the entire right side, we could raise both sides to become powers of base 8. And that would simply cancel out log base a to 8, log base a to 8 with the 8. Um, and your new equation becomes 48 over w equals 4. Now, at this point, you want to get W by itself. W is a denominator. That's not good. Let's get rid of it uh, being down there by multiplying by W. That's ugly. Let me put a times W here, times W there. So the W's do cancel out. We're going to get 48 equals 4W. Final step would be to divide by 4. Divide by 4. W, w equals 12. Okay. Now, the only other detail that we need to do is go back and make sure we don't end up with negative values inside our logarithms. The 12 right here is not going to give you a negative value, and there's nowhere else to plug it in, so 12 is a good answer. Jumping to 14, which property would we apply first to make this smaller and nicer? The what? The product property, okay, we are going to apply the product property because of the plus sign. But remember, the only way we could apply it is if it's just log base 2 of something plus log base 2 of something else. But see, there's a 4 out here. That messes it up. 
So what property are we going to apply first? Power property. This 4 that's messing it up, I could simply use the power property, take that 4 and make it an exponent of x. That'll become x to the 4th. So let me rewrite it. So we have, we have log base 2 of x to the 4th plus log base 2 of 5. Now at this point, um, I'm going to condense it using the product property, which means I'm going to take both log base 2's and put them together as one single log base 2. So there's my single log base 2. Now, of course, I need to take the m value, x to the 4th, and multiply it by the m n value, the 5. So I could show my work and say x to the 4th times 5, or you could just do it in your head. x to the 4th times 5 is uh, 5x to the 4th equals, um, on the right side, we're just going to bring that down, log base 2 of 405. So now we really do have an equation that has log base 2 of the entire left side equals log base 2 of the entire right side. Now we're going to take both sides and raise them to be powers of base 2. So we're going to put a 2 right here, a 2 right there, which causes it to cancel out. And what you have now is 5x to the 4th equals 405. And from there, it just becomes a regular equation that you solve. You divide both sides by 5. And we'll get 81 on the right side. So we have x to the 4th equals 81. That's your new equation. Now, if you want... Wow, that's ugly. If you want to get rid of that 4 as a power, what would you have to apply? The 4th root, right? The 4th root. So, in other words, what times itself 4 times will get you 81? 3. Right? What times itself... Uh, 4 times will give you 81. 3 times 3 is 9. Times 3 is 27. Times 3 is 81. So the answer is 3 right there. Okay. <clears throat>